Okay, we are now ready to measure We're now ready to measure the resistor capacitor circuit. So it's known as an RC circuit for resistor capacitor. The resistor in this situation is a 100 kilo ohm resistor. So that's 100,000 ohms of resistance. And the capacitor, it looks like that's not going to come into focus, or maybe it is is a 100 microfarad resistor or capacitor. Now with the capacitors, the ones that are in the lab kit are known as uh, polarized capacitors. Um, they have a direction that the current wants to go through them. If you look real carefully, this one side is measured as a negative. It has a shorter leg to it, but I would be careful of using the, the size of the legs unless you have a brand new circuit or a brand new capacitor. Um, because if somebody cuts the other one, then you can't tell. But on most of these, there is a spot that says which side is negative. So that is to the short end on this one. That needs to be downstream. So I'm going to hook in my battery on this side, go through the resistor, then through the capacitor. So I need to put the long arm, the positive side, upstream, and the low end downstream. I'm going to bend that to the side so we can see this a little bit. And make sure it gets in there snugly because, especially with the different size legs, it might be hard to uh, get them both in without bending things a little bit. Okay, make sure the resistor is seated well as well. Now, before I start measuring, because my battery go, should be up around 3 volts, I'm going to need to go to the 20 volt setting because the 2000 millivolt setting won't quite cut it. And I warned you folks about this in other parts of the lab, and then I didn't do it. Um, I videotaped the other parts of the lab yesterday, and I'm videotaping this part early the next morning. I left the circuit on overnight, so you can see my battery has died down a little bit. So instead of being up around 3 volts, it's only around 2.74 volts to start out. Okay, it will still work. It's just not going to charge quite as high. And in this particular setup, I'm going to connect both ends of this together to get the circuit to flow. In the circuit diagram, there is a switch. It doesn't matter which side the switch is on. In fact, because of the way I'm measuring things, I'm going to use the positive end as my switch. And all I have to do is connect this together and it's ready to go. But before I do that, I want to measure the voltage across the capacitor. And notice that it is not quite zero. So what I'm going to do is take one of my other resistors and I'm just going to touch the two wires there on both sides. What I'm doing here is allowing any current that's on the resistor, or excuse me, on the capacitor to backflow through to even out. So the two plates that are in there, the two parts, there's a foil wrap in there two foil wraps. I'm going to get those separated and get those away. It doesn't take this much screwing around. I just didn't have things quite in the right spot. And of course I'm talking to it while I'm doing it. So let's try that again. If you need to restart the lab, you'll need to make sure that you undo that. If you're videotaping your own setup, make sure you do that at the beginning of the lab and then redo it if you mess up on the uh, on the taping. You have to go back and redo that. And in fact, there's two parts to this where one, we're going to measure the current. The other, we're going to marry, me measure the resistance. Excuse me. First, we're measuring the voltage. Then we're going to measure the current. And you want to make sure in that middle step between the two, you discharge the capacitor again. Okay, so this is going to involve three hands. 
because what I want to do is get this jammed in there well and then I'm going to close my circuit and then I'm just going to sit and watch while this thing charges up now what you want to do ah, okay so slight misstep there let's undo this notice that this thing has already started to charge so I need to discharge it Go back and make sure that it's discharged. Okay. So instead of talking during this, what I'm going to recommend that you do is rather than try to do this live, is you can pause the video every three seconds. Okay, sorry about the jump in the video there. My furnace just kicked on and was making a lot of racket. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my capacitor is discharged, which it is not quite. So once again, connect the two sides together. It should only take a moment or two to discharge that. Okay, totally discharged. Now what I'm going to do is just let the video run. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to hit the switch. I'm going to connect this up. And it's going to take about 30 seconds for this thing to charge all the way up, or at least close to all the way up. And what you can do is every three seconds on the video, from when I start, you can take a measurement. So every three seconds, pause the video, write down the number, go on and repeat okay so we're all set to go and connection So I let that go a little bit longer and I'm going to keep it together as I'm going here. You'll notice that it slowed down over time and that's exactly the way it's supposed to behave. So notice it didn't quite reach the same voltage as the original battery back here. That was about up to 2.75. If we wanted to wait a really, really long time, infinity in some sense, then this would charge all the way up to that value, or at least very close. You can so I realized I just made a mistake while reviewing this video before I posted it. What I just said wasn't quite right. In reality, the voltage across the resistor, excuse me, across the capacitor would reach a limiting value when we were getting very close to that. However, that will never quite approach the voltage on the battery because there's also a voltage on the resistor. Remember, the resistor uh, has its own voltage uh, whenever there's a particular current going through it, V equals IR. And the capacitor, as it gets more and more charge on it, also has a voltage. Now, earlier, while it's charging, they don't quite add up to the battery because the capacitor is charging, but once the capacitor is already charged, all, all the way charged, the voltage on the battery, the voltage on the resistor add to the voltage on the battery. See there, it's still climbing. 
well, mostly climbing. Now one of the troubles here is the voltmeter actually has a resistance through it and you can actually get it discharging the capacitor. But that's another topic. Okay, so that is the information for the charge up. Just for fun. Nah, never mind. Not going to do that. Well, yeah, just for fun. Let's do this. I am going to discharge this. So we'll watch it count down. You don't have to record this uh, data, but go ahead and watch it. See, as time goes on, that charge is going to come off. I've got my, re uh, my meter in backwards, but that's all right. The negative sign just means the current's going opposite to the way I thought it was going to go. And you'll see over time this drops, and it will slow down over time as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the capacitor, excuse me, the multimeter does have a resistance through it. So I would get a different time constant for this countdown on the way down. And again, if I don't keep my connections quite right, and it's going to give me trouble. So obviously those times that I let it go aren't going to be data points that you would want to take if you want to do this. Now the voltmeter has a very, very high resistance to it. Reason for that is you don't want current to go through the voltmeter. You typically want it to stay in the resistor that you're looking at or the surf the component that you're looking at. So it's going to take a long time for this thing to discharge on its own. I don't know if I'm quite patient enough to do that all the way. If you'd like to try it at home, if you happen to have the kit, please feel free to do that. But let me discharge this thing. Notice how quickly this discharges. Bam, just like that. Now there's always a little bit of latent left on it. There you go. All the way gone. Now one of the things that grad students do to each other occasionally is they'll charge these things up, put them on the shelf, and then let somebody else come in and touch them and shock themselves. Uh, don't do that. I didn't tell you to do that. And it's only like two or three volts, right? So it's going to be more of a startle than it's going to be a hurt, unless you have a really big capacitor. Okay, now for the next part of this, we need to measure the current as this thing charges up. So what I'm going to do is put my current sensor, my ammeter on the high end here. So that's the positive end. This is the downstream end, the negative end. And when I start, all I have to do is touch this end. Now things will charge up and I'm going to measure the current through the system. So once again, I'm going to start this up. And as soon as I basically say go, you can start recording data every three seconds. And I'll let it go for at least 30 seconds, if not more. So let's go. Once again, that current slows down and goes down over time. A 
Okay, and eventually it basically stops. Now, that was on the 2000 micro ohm, or excuse me, micro ampere setting. Let's discharge the resistor or the capacitor. I'm going to turn back here and just double check that I did truly discharge it. Not quite. So if you don't make perfect contact here, it will not quite discharge. Okay, there we go. So this time, I'm going to put it down at 200 micro ohms, so I should get a little bit more information on there, a little bit more precision. Once again, hook up my positive end. And get it set up to go. Go. Notice I got a little bit more precision there. And as time goes on, the current slows down. Okay, that's been over 30 seconds, but I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer. Notice now it would have been one at the end of our set. Now it'd be less than one, so it'd be zero. So we still got a little bit more current going and working its way out. Okay, notice it's going to take a little while to get that last digit because there's some rounding that goes on. And there we go. Completely discharged. So I'd recommend that you use that second set for the data collection. If you use the first step, I'm not going to be too worried. But that second set with the greater precision down to the tenth of a microvolt, or excuse me, microamp would be the one to use. Okay, so that should do it for this lab. Good luck with your data analysis. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the discussion forums.